Yeah. We don't want to be the sort of country where people get a job because they are a friend of the Prime Minister. You can be a friend of the Prime Minister and get a job, and that's quite proper. But it shouldn't be because of a political donation or a, a, a friendship. Do, do you not feel there's an urgency to, uh, to improving standards of ethics in our politics today? I definitely think there's an urgency for that. I don't think it's something which is unique. If you look at some of the historic figures in the past, there were some quite questionable things going on, but that doesn't excuse it. And I think it's important to anybody in a leadership position, whether that's uh, you know civil service leadership or political leadership, to show that they care about these things and to take action to back those up. Yes. And I think the seven principles that Lord Nolan laid out are a very good starting point for all that. Yeah, I mean, look... A lot of people are concerned. I know you, your committee and you do not investigate individual cases. You don't report on particular, on particular circumstances. But you are concerned with public perceptions of honesty and standards yeah. of conduct in our, in our public life. And a lot of people are concerned from the point of view of public trust and the consent that we require in a democracy that a minister in charge of tax policy should have to pay a penalty for unpaid tax. Do you share that concern? And if you do, tell me why. I, I do share a concern, you know, that, that people who are in those responsible positions should show leadership and should show integrity. So in the current case, I mean, as you say, we don't um, we don't look at individual cases as a committee. But I think what we can say is that the prime minister has on this occasion asked for this to be properly investigated by an independent figure yeah. so that we can actually find out what happened. And one of the things that's worried me over the time that I've been in this job is that there have been cases in the past where the, those investigations haven't happened and we've never known whether the allegations were true or not. And I think that's the worst of all worlds because it means that you know we, we've got the allegations, we think there may be a problem here, but it's never been resolved. Hopefully, with the investigation by the independent advisor or ministerial interest, at least we will get to the bottom of this and then we will see what action is taken, if action does need to be taken, and that's the critical thing. Yes, well, the Prime Minister has said, hasn't he, that there are questions here which need to be answered in this particular, in this particular case. And there, there is more to come out. There's more to be, to be uh, investigated by the ethics advisor at Number 10 Downing Street. But a lot of this is out in the open, is now, is now, is now common knowledge among them that the, the Minister, Nadim Zahawi, was required to pay a sum of money to the revenue in relation to unpaid tax. And I think the penalty was, was, was part of that. It's concern about that. We'll see how it plays out politically. We don't know. You or, neither you nor I are clairvoyant. But is the concern about that as a question of principle justified? Is that a legitimate area for, for concern, Lord Evans? I think it is a legitimate area for concern. We need to understand the facts. I don't want to rush to judgment. It's not my job anyway to, to, to judge these things. But absolutely... If there are credible suggestions that people in public life are not acting with integrity, uh, if they're not acting with openness and honesty, then that needs to be looked at. It needs to be investigated independently and we need to understand what's happened and then the consequences or no consequences if there's no problem. But if there is a problem, then the consequences have to follow. Yeah. Uh, look, you, you and your committee, Lord Evans, you consistently argued for a transparency and the need to avoid a damaging perception of, of British politics. Now, with that in mind, and this is a, a question of principle as well as as well as current uh, current debate, would it be better, do you think, if the chair of the British Broadcasting Corporation was not directly appointed on the say-so of the Prime Minister of the day, as he or she is now? Well, the appointment of people into those public roles is based on a, a model which says that it is ultimately a ministerial decision, uh, but that in order to make sure that the, 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 the process has been gone through properly, that there is a panel chaired by an independent figure mm. who will then make a recommendation. That's the way that the chairman of the BBC has been appointed, as is the case for quite a lot of public appointments. Yeah. We've looked at that in a recent report. Uh, you, could, you could say, well, perhaps this should be taken out of the political sphere. On the other hand, you then got the problem of you know, people who are being appointed without any political accountability. And we felt that ultimately, if it is a ministerial responsibility, then they've got to make that decision and then they've got to account for it. So I think it has to be in the political sphere, but there does need to be that independent and dispassionate assessment as to whether any particular candidate actually could do the job properly. 
Yeah. And that's the, that's the key question. Yeah, well, the, well, there are checks and balances surrounding the appointment of, of, a, of, yeah. a, of a role like the chair of the BBC. And it's part of your role to discuss the conduct of officials high and low without fear or favour. And they don't come higher than the head of the civil service, do they? So we know that the, uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Simon Case, knew the man appointed to chair the BBC, that he had a role in this private loan to the Prime Minister who gave him the job. And he didn't mention it to anyone involved in the appointment process. Now, I spoke yesterday to the, uh, the commissioner at the time of public appointments, and he thought that should have been made known to he, him and to that appointments panel. It's a, his, as you'll know, that's a piece of Riddell. Do you agree with him? Should it have been made, made known by the cabinet secretary as a matter of principle and transparency? Well, it's not our job to look at the individual cases, but it is, of course, the job of the commissioner for public appointments to look at individual cases. Uh, it, it, Peter Riddle takes, you know, his judgment is that it should have been declared, then I would back that judgment because he's a man of unimpeachable integrity. He's seen a lot, both as a journalist and as a, a, a working in the public uh, interest. So I would back Peter's judgment on that. Uh, and if he felt that that was something that should have taken place and it didn't, then that's a problem. And I'm pleased in the same way that I was pleased that the independent advisor is being uh, asked to look at the, the, the case relating to Mr. Zahawi. I'm also pleased that William Shawcross, who is the Commissioner for Public Appointments, is reviewing the appointment of the BBC chairman. Yes. Because again, what we need is dispassionate, non-political view being taken on the facts so that we can understand what's actually happened and if there is a scandal. I don't know whether there's been a problem with this appointment. I'm not, that's not my job. But I do think that the person whose job it is, which is the regulator for public appointments, needs to be engaged in this, and I am pleased that, 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 that therefore the commissioner is looking at it. Yeah, well, look, just tell me a bit more, just in, in a little more depth, why you say what you just said, that it's important and it's uh, valuable and you support the, the Commissioner for Public Appointments looking at the appointment of the BBC uh, uh, chairman. Why does that, ma that matter? Some people listening to this and looking at it casually may say it's all a little bit, you know, internal Whitehall chatter. Why is it important, Lord Evans? Well, these jobs, the, you know, the, the sort of jobs that we're talking about here are really important. They're important because of the individual organisations that, 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 that people are, uh, are running, but they're also important for the quality of our public life. And from that point of view, we need to be confident that the processes have been properly followed. And you could say, oh, well, the process is boring. Well, it, it kind of is boring, but it's also important because yeah. we don't want to be the sort of country where people get a job because they are a friend of the Prime Minister. You can be a friend of the Prime Minister and get a job, and that's quite proper. But it shouldn't be because of a political donation or a, a friendship that you get the job. You should get the job because you're going to do a good job on behalf of the British people. Right, that is a, a clear and strong statement of principle. Now, uh, on another front, the stories concerning the police and trust in the police have been very current. Now, in your your report today, you talk about... about, about cultivating a, 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 a culture of, of high standards of conduct, ethical conduct. You talk about the importance of, uh, of, of whistleblowing. You talk about the important of, uh, importance of senior, senior officials encouraging junior officials. Now, in the police, there's been worry, hasn't there, about police officers in some cases knowing about misconduct among colleagues and not reporting it or acting on what they know. What are your thoughts on that against the background of what you've been saying today? Well, I, I've worked with the police a lot over the course of my career. I have a great deal of respect for very many of the police officers that I have worked with, uh, and you know, I would count a number of them as friends. But I think if there is something going on, you know, the appalling revelations about what has happened with the the Carrick case, if other people knew about that and didn't report it, then I think that is a very, very serious failing. And I think it's important for the leadership of the police service to look at this and to work out why it is that people are not feeling able to point out when their colleagues are falling way short of acceptable, uh, acceptable behaviour. Uh, and I'm very pleased that uh, the commissioner of, of the Metropolitan Police uh, has made it clear that he is determined to stop at nothing to sort out these problems. And you know, everyone tells us that there are gonna be more problems coming forward it's really, really critical that people in the police service recognise that they have a responsibility to the public to do the job, but also to make sure that other colleagues and themselves are living up to the ethical standards that the public expect.